Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to your news update from the Frankfurt office of CMC Markets. The price of crude oil, West Texas Intermediate and Brent, yeah, really had a crash day yesterday, strongly down about 4% um, after there um, have been some questions raised about the prospects of a production cut by OPEC or OPEC together with non-OPEC states. So there was Brazil actually um, um, saying after the OPEC met and Brazil and other states, they met on uh, the weekend, over the weekend in Vienna. And um, there were several states actually saying some disappointing, uh, giving out some disappointment sta disappointing statements. So there was Brazil said that those um, talks in Vienna, there have been no decisions made. There, it was just conversations as Brazil um, said. So OPEC and non-OPEC production cuts might be far, far ahead. Iraq uh, repeated that they want exemptions from that production cut because they just defeated ISIS and uh, now they got their oil back more or less and so now they want to sell their oil and do not want to um, join actually the, uh, some, some production cuts that might come. The Secretariat of the OPEC actually said that more talks will be needed. Russia, who together with the Saudis spearheaded this attempt to form a global alliance for production cuts, Russia said that a production freeze would be better than a production cut. Nigeria and Libya, uh, Libya actually already have exemptions. That was a deal they made in Algier um, just um, in September. And so, yeah, it's um, everybody has its interests and his or her interests in that situation. And it's all but certain that there will be production cuts coming. So oil went down strongly. We have a major resistance when you look at the uh, in the chart of Brent crude oil, a major resistance at $52. So we, we attempted to break that resistance, but bounced lower. We had a... Um, falling wedge formation and yesterday we just fell out of that falling wedge formation. So that is bearish for the moment. Watch crude for further losses that might come. One big topic that I've been watching and one trend that I've been watching out of uh, Europe is the um, behavior and investment allocations of global investment funds. So you look, if you look at the Euro stocks, if you look at the DAX or the ATX in Austria, then you see that it decoupled from Wall Street. Wall Street is near its all-time highs. It's done some correction, yes, but it's just um, very near to its all-time highs where the DAX is actually 20% below its all-time high. And so I've been um, looking for the reasons why this decoupling happened. And there are two reasons, actually. It was the Brexit referendum, and everybody fears that after, or feared that after the Brexit referendum, growth in the Eurozone would go down. Everybody feared that after the Brexit referendum, the inflation is going to go down in the Eurozone. But what we have is relatively stable growth. We've got no major expansion in the economy, but we've got growth. So no really negative impacts from Brexit to growth. And what we also have is inflation ticking up. And there's no real trend um, yet, but Mario Draghi and the Bundesbank expect that inflation will double until the year end or the first month of 2017. So investment funds that fled euro stocks um, after the Brexit referendum because they feared that, infl uh, that deflation will come might think um, a second time about uh, euro stocks in the coming days or months or weeks. I don't know when, but might, they might return from their, um, from their overinvestments that they have right now in US stocks and might go back into euro stocks. There's one statistic actually coming from the Bank of America, Mary Lynch, showing that this return of investment funds into euro stocks has not yet happened. It's the 38th week, uh, 38th week in, in, in a row, actually, that investment funds pulled money out of euro stocks and put it into, into Wall Street. 
Now, if you look at the situation at Wall Street, we've got um, a relatively bearish um, uh, positioning of options traders. There are seven times more call options on the VIX volatility index for the S&P 500 index. Um, so that is somehow something like a fear gauge. And uh, there are seven times more um, positions um, betting on a spike in volatility than uh, there are positions that um, are betting on a calm trading environment. So a lot of people expect that there will be a somehow second crash coming on Wall Street. And if you look at the, um, the low of the Dow Jones in September, um, should we break lower below that support of that low in September, then there might really be a good day for those call options in the VIX. You can also, with CMC markets, trade the VIX, so that might be worth um, having a look at.